sorry uh, everyone for all those who joined in late probably are not aware that uh, there are some bandwidth issues here I'm not able to con uh, connect on the LAN so I'm Wi-Fi therefore I'm only on audio only mode because there's simply not enough bandwidth uh, to support a video connection hope everyone can hear me can everyone hear me I hope everyone can hear me so we can continue uh, with the lecture uh, today and uh, uh, so as we said yesterday we are This is what we said, is it? Delay spread. Fine. And uh, we also said that the delay spread, that uh, this delay spread in wireless channels, this is the this is of the order of uh, a couple of microseconds, right? In outdoor wireless channel delay spread, this tau, both tau RMS and tau maximum delay spread, they are of the order of. Both are approximately of the order of microseconds. Right? Typical delay spreads are of the order of microseconds. Then we also saw mechanisms to characterize both. I mean, we also saw a different metrics defined to characterize this delay spread. One, of course, is the maximum delay spread, that is, last arriving multipath component. So we have tau max equals tau l minus 1 minus tau 0 this is the maximum delay spread right this is because tau l minus 1 is the last arriving component and tau naught this is the this is the tau naught is the first arriving component so I have the last arriving component tau l minus 1 I have the first arriving component uh, tau naught and the delay that is the interval between tau l minus 1 and tau naught this is the multipath uh, this is the multipath uh, delay spread right uh, so now therefore and also we also looked at the rms delay spread we said rms delay spread is slightly more uh, slightly more refined that is if i have tau rms the way to define tau rms is basically i form bi equals bi divided by divided by summation of bi that is the we said bi is the fraction of power in uh, bi is the fraction of the power in the ith path and uh, what we said is then one can define the average mean delay that is tau bar is summation bi tau i that is basically summation pi tau i divided by summation pi and also the tau rms equals square root of summation i tau i minus tau bar root square Right. So tau RMS equal to square root of summation i pi tau i minus tau bar 
whole square. All right, so the RMS delay squared equals square root summation over square root under root summation over i di uh, tau i minus uh, tau bar uh, tau bar h i. Okay, fine. So this is what we said is the RMS uh, squared. So now let me go on to something. Uh, now and also we looked at another important aspect. What we look, what we said is that if I look at the frequency response, the channel frequency response, this channel can be modeled as a as a filter with the channel frequency response. And how can I get the frequency response? The frequency response is simply the Fourier transform. So H T H F equals minus infinity to infinity h t t to the power of minus j 2 pi f t t t this is the channel impulse response h t and this is a channel frequency response Everyone following me? Is everyone clear? Fine. So if we said also in the ideal case, basically we also said that in the ideal case, when the channel is an impulse, the channel is, let's say the ideal case, simply the impulse ht equals delta t. Can someone tell me what is the what is the frequency response of this? Channel. If channel is impulse, what is the frequency response? If the channel, if HT is delta T, the frequency response is HF which is equal to 1. Fine. In fact, if the channel is any delta T minus tau naught, we said the modulus magnitude of HF is actually 1, identical to 1, right. On the other hand, if the channel has, as an extreme case, if the channel is 1, that is a huge delay spread, the channel is 1, then the impulse response is actually only a simple impulse, that is delta F, right. Therefore, as the spread, Therefore, what you can see is, therefore, what you can see is as the delay spread is increasing. The delay spread is increasing, but the coherence bandwidth is decreasing. Coherence bandwidth is Can someone tell me what is the definition of the coherence bandwidth? Yesterday we talked about the coherence bandwidth. Can someone tell me what is the definition of the coherence bandwidth? Can someone remind me what is the definition of the coherence bandwidth? We define the coherence bandwidth VC. Yeah, what we said is basically the frequency response, if I look at the frequency response of the channel, the response over which the, the bandwidth, the range over which the channel response is flat, approximately flat is known as the coherence bandwidth VC. Coherence bandwidth VC is the range over which the channel response is flat. So it's basically the range over which This is BC. Is the range over which channel response is flat? And therefore, we also said something very interesting. If the signal bandwidth, for instance, If the signal bandwidth 
if the signal bandwidth Vs is less than the coherent bandwidth, is there any distortion? If the signal bandwidth is if signal bandwidth is less than coherent bandwidth, is there any distortion? And on the other hand, if the signal bandwidth is more than the coherence bandwidth, if the signal bandwidth is more than the coherence bandwidth, is there any distortion? When is there distortion? When is there no distortion? When is there distortion and when is there no? If the signal bandwidth is greater than the coherence bandwidth, is there any distortion? If the signal bandwidth is less than the coherence bandwidth, is there any distortion? Yeah, if the signal bandwidth is less than the coherence bandwidth, there is no distortion, correct? There is no distortion. If signal bandwidth is greater than the coherence bandwidth, there is distortion, okay? And that is as simple as that. Basically, what we are saying is that each channel has a certain bandwidth, right? Each channel has a certain bandwidth. What do we mean by the bandwidth of a channel? It's not like a bandwidth of a filter. The bandwidth of a channel is simply the portion or the range of frequency over which the response of the channel is constant, right? The response of the channel is constant. So if the bandwidth of the signal is less than this coherence bandwidth, then you pass it through, if the signal passes through the channel, it experiences flat fading. It experiences a constant fading. This is also known as the flat fading. So there are two things. If a signal bandwidth, if this is my channel, Okay, this is the coherence bandwidth and this is the channel bandwidth. Now if I pass this signal through the channel, what I will get out the output is also something that looks like this. Right? This is the output. Right? The output is basically identical to the input because because the output is identical to the input because why is the output identical to the input the output is identical to the input because the signal uh, uh, the signal only experiences the flat part of the channel right it only experiences the flat part of the channel and this is therefore also known as flat fading this is also known as a flat fading scenario This is also known as a flat fading channel scenario. When Vs is less than Vc, when the signal bandwidth is less than the coherence bandwidth Vc, this is also known as a flat scenario. On the other hand, you can see when Vs is basically greater than Vc, let's say this is my coherence bandwidth. This is my coherence bandwidth and this is my signal bandwidth. Now you can see if I pass this signal through the channel, what is going to happen? Outside of these, these bands, this band is going to be heavily attenuated. Everyone can see that? Everyone agrees with this? These bands where the channel response is very low are going to be attenuated so I'm going to have some output which looks like this so this is input spectrum this is the output spectrum why is there distortion there is distortion because the signal bandwidth is greater than The signal bandwidth is greater than the 
coherence bandwidth so signal bandwidth bs is greater than the coherence bandwidth when the signal bandwidth is greater than the coherence bandwidth what we have is basically parts of the signal spectrum are these parts are distorted when the signal bandwidth is greater than the coherence bandwidth part of the signal spectrum parts of the signal spectrum are distorted so basically it is saying that it is saying uh, that different frequency bands experience different attenuation all right different what does it mean it means to say that different frequency bands experience different attenuation right different frequency bands experience different frequency bands experience different attenuation fine and that is why it is distorted what is the meaning of distorted what is the meaning of saying spectrum is distorted if all the frequency bands are the same attenuation or amplification then there is no distortion there is distortion because some frequency bands are amplified while other frequency bands are attenuated that is the meaning of distortion meaning of distortion me means different frequency in different frequency bands there is different levels of amplification or attenuation that is precisely what the meaning of distortion is therefore since the different frequency bands experience different attenuation this is also known as frequency selective This is also known as frequency selective fading. What is the meaning of frequency selective fading? When we have different frequency bands which are experiencing different attenuation, that is basically frequency selective fading. Also termed as frequency selective fading so basically we have two different kinds of fading one is the flat fading flat fading is when the signal is basically over the flat part of the channel that is when bc is bs is less than bc when bs is greater than bc when bs is greater than bc right then there is frequency selective fading BS is less than PC implies when the signal bandwidth is less than the coherence bandwidth it implies a flat fading channel when BS is greater than DC it implies a frequency Selective fading. So there are two kinds of fading. One is flat fading. One is frequency selective fading. Flat fading channel and there is a flat fading channel and then there is a frequency selective uh, fading channel can someone tell me what is the what is the condition for flat fading flat fading is basically when bs is greater than bs is less than dc and frequency selective fading is when also we saw yesterday that and from these examples that we talked about in the morning, we said that the delay spread, delay spread is inversely proportional to the coherence bandwidth. That's what we saw, right? From what we saw in the figure also, 
we said that as delay spread increases coherent bandwidth decreases because here for an impulse what is the delay spread can someone tell me what is the delay spread for this impulse for an impulse delay spread is zero what is the coherence bandwidth for this impulse what is the coherence bandwidth for the the coherence bandwidth is infinity because it is flat over the on the other hand if it is flat over the entire time then delay spread is what is the delay spread for this scenario here if it is flat over the entire time what is the delay spread delay spread is infinity while the coherence bandwidth is delta f coherence bandwidth is zero so what we are saying is as coherence bandwidth increases or as delay spread increases the coherence bandwidth as delay spread increases the coherence bandwidth decreases as the delay spread increases the coherence bandwidth decreases right as the delay spread increases the coherence bandwidth of this system the coherence bandwidth uh, decreases right so roughly we said yesterday we had a relation what was the relation we said between delay spread and coherence bandwidth approximate relation What is the approximate relation between delay spread and coherence bandwidth? That is correct. You are getting that from UI UIET. That is BC. The coherence bandwidth is equal to one over twice the delay spread. We said this is an approximate relation between the coherence bandwidth and the delay spread. That is the coherence bandwidth BC equals one over twice the delay spread the coherence bandwidth bc equals one over twice the delay spread therefore we also calculated what is the coherence bandwidth of a typical channel so td equals td approximately equals two microseconds for outdoor channels therefore what is the value of bc bc equals what is the value of BC? Does anyone remember what is the value of uh, BC for this outdoor? That is 1 over, that is exactly correct, that is 1 over 2 into 2 microseconds equals 250 kilohertz. We said the outdoor bandwidth, we said outdoor, outdoor coherence bandwidth, coherence bandwidth, for outdoor channels is approximately 200 to 300 kilo approximately 200 to 300 now today what we are going to do is i want to look at a different interpretation of this coherence bandwidth let us look at the signal in the time domain let us look at the time domain interpretation Now let us say this is my signal. Let me draw it on that case. Let us consider two different scenarios. Let us say this is my this. This is my signal with bit time as E, this is S0, symbol 0, this is S1, symbol 1, this is symbol 2, symbol 3, symbol 4 and so on. And then I will have due to multipath propagation, I will have delayed version of the signal. 
Alright, let this be the delayed version of the Okay, so what I'm saying is basically in time domain, let's say I have a signal with symbols S0, S1, S2, S3 and S4. The symbol time is T. And then I have a delayed version of the signal. Let this be the delay spread. I'm just calling it tau D. This is the delay spread. So I have a signal, I have a delayed version of this. Now compare this to this situation where I have the same. But then I have a large delay spread. So what I have is basically I have signal delayed by a large Is it clear what we are doing to everyone? So this is a 0 But I have a large delay spread. So is it clear what we are doing? So in one situation, in the first situation, I have a Signal Sorry, I think that whole figure got erased. Somehow I'm not able to see what happened to that. Anyway, so I basically... Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can everyone hear me? Okay. So basically what I... Let me just try to redraw, redraw the figure. Basically I have... A signal And I have another multipath component with a large 
delay spread right i have a signal i have a signal with so this is the direct component let's say this is the first component and this is the next component or the last component or let's say there are only two components is the first component and the second component and the second component is coming with a large delay that is the delay spread is large delay spread td is large compared to The delay, the delay spread TD is large compared to the symbol time. Okay, because I'm trying to my best to draw this thing, but it's very difficult to draw this thing. Please try to understand. So basically, there is a signal. There is a there is a signal with different symbols: S not, S one, S two, S three, and S four. These are the different symbols of the signal. And then also, I have a multipath component with. the whole sig whole signal delayed delayed by the delay spread and these two signal copies are adding at the receiver what is the problem can someone see what is the problem in this situation when two signal copies when one of the signal copies is delayed by a large delay spread when these two signals are adding at the receiver can someone tell me what is the problem what is the problem that we are experiencing here in this scenario in these two signal copies when one of the signal copies is delayed by a large amount of time what is happening when these are signals are for instance if you can see s1 will overlap with s0 no constructive and destructive interference is always there but beyond constructive and destructive interference if you look at this s1 is overlapping with s0 s2 is overlapping with S one, S three is overlapping with S two, and so on. S four is overlapping with uh, 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 S three, and so on. So basically, different symbols are interfering. You can see when the when the delay spread is greater than the symbol time. Can everyone can see this? Let me repeat this thing. Let me write this thing. When T D is greater than symbol time specifically when td is even uh, not much greater but when td is even greater than let's say half the symbol time that is what will happen we have one symbol and if delay spread is greater than half the symbol time then it has already you can see it is overlapping with the half of this is for this symbol the other half is overlapping with the next symbol when td is greater than different ts by 2 we have the symbols when td is greater than ts by 2 or t by 2 ts is t symbol let me call this this symbol as t so when td is greater than ts by 2 what is happening at the different symbols are overlapping at the receiver this is nothing but inter symbol interference this is exactly inter symbol right for instance let us take a look at this thing this again
two s zero s one s two s three s four and now I am delaying this by I'm delaying this by delay spread uh, TD, right? So this is TD. This is TS, which is the symbol time. Is the flicker is the flicker clear to everyone? This is the signal first path. This is the second path this is the first path this is the second path right this is the first path this is the second path but the second path is delayed by td which is much greater than td which is greater than ts by 2 what can you see you can see that s0 is overlapping with s1 s1 is overlapping with Oh, S1, S1 is overlapping with S0, S2 is overlapping with S1, S3 is overlapping with S2, S4 is overlapping with S3. Therefore, different symbols are overlapping. Everyone can see that? Right, because these are going to add up at the receiver, these different multipath components that you get at the receiver, right, the first multipath component and the second multipath component are going to sum up at the receiver. What you are going to see is basically the sum of the two multipath components. When these now, when these two multipath components sum, what you are seeing is because different symbols are overlapping, these different symbols are going to, these different symbols are going to interfere at the Receiver, this is also known as inter symbol interference. This is also known as inter symbol interference. Also, this is abbreviated as ISI. ISI stands for inter symbol interference inter symbol interference what is the meaning of inter symbol interference inter symbol interference is basically where one symbol or the previous or the with the previous symbol is interfering with the current symbol for instance you can see here s1 is the current symbol s0 is the previous symbol when they both add s0 is interfering with s1 therefore it is causing inter symbol interference and what is Intersymbol interference, intersymbol interference, when does it occur? It occurs when TS or TD, the delay spread is greater than or equal to TS by 2. So, ISI, when does ISI occur? ISI occurs when TD equals greater than or equal to by 2. Now let me show you something very interesting and remarkable. So we have seen the ISI condition ISI when TD greater than or equal to TS by 2. Now what is the value of TD in terms of the coherence bandwidth? Can someone substitute or can someone tell me what is the value of coherence bandwidth? TD, can someone tell me what is TD in terms of the coherence bandwidth? TD is 1 over 2 BC.
and what is TS? Symbol time, what is the relation to the signal bandwidth? Can someone tell me what is the relation between symbol time and signal bandwidth? Complex symbol time and signal bandwidth? Did we talk about this? What is the relation between TS and BS? What is the relation between the signal, the symbol time and the signal, the symbol time, the symbol time and the signal bandwidth? It's not a problem. People should know this from the basic undergraduate digital communication class. What is the relation between symbol time and the bandwidth of the signal? For instance, at a bandwidth of 1 kilohertz, what is the symbol rate I can transmit? Well, Symbol time, the complex symbol time is exactly the inverse of the bandwidth, right? TS is basically 1 over BS. The complex symbol time TS is exactly equal to 1 over BS. Therefore, I can write this as TD greater than or equal to TS by 2 as 1 over 2 BC greater than or equal to 1 over 2 BS, which implies BS is greater than or equal to BC. Have we already seen this condition before? BS is greater than or equal to BC? Have we already seen this condition before? BS is greater than or equal to BC. What is this condition? Yes, this basically means frequency selective fading. That is exactly what this means. Frequency selective This means frequency selective fading. If BS is greater than or equal to BC, if the signal bandwidth is greater than or equal to the coherence bandwidth, if the BS, if the quantity BS is greater than or equal to BC, if the signal bandwidth is greater than or equal to the coherence bandwidth, then we have frequency selective fading. We have frequency selective fading. Right? If the signal bandwidth is greater than or equal to the coherence bandwidth, if the frequency and therefore what this means is BS equal to BC implies TD is greater than or equal to TS by 2. So therefore this leads to ISI. So what this basically is saying that ISI in the time domain is nothing but frequency selective fading in the frequency domain. So this is what it means. Basically what we are saying is basically if there is intersymbol interference in if there is intersymbol interference in time domain, if there is intersymbol interference in time domain, right? If there is an intersymbol interference in the time domain, then there is frequency selective fading in the frequency domain. If there is intersymbol interference in the time domain, there is frequency selective fading in the frequency domain. This is what this is the last point I want to say regarding the relation between the interpretation of the delay spread and the time domain relation of the delay spread. But for a periodic signal, I, the question is not clear. There is no periodic signal here. If you are thinking that this is a periodic signal, this is not a periodic signal. Which signal? This is not a periodic signal. The way I have drawn it, it seems like a periodic signal, but this is a random information signal. Is that clear? So this is for simplicity, I have drawn it like this, but this is not a periodic signal. The signal can be 
something like this basically it has a structure which is not periodic this is an information signal right this is not a periodic signal in fact one cannot also talk about the fourier transform of this signal one has to talk about the power spectral density of this signal because this is a random signal one has to talk about the power spectral density that is we have to talk about the signal spectrum we cannot talk even talk about the fourier transform this is the random information signal this is not a periodic signal all right okay yeah so the final point i want to clarify regarding this thing is basically what is the relation between the time domain and the frequency domain interpretation of the delay spread because people were asking what is the impact of the delay spread now everyone can see the impact of the delay spread impact of delay spread is it causes intersymbol interference can we summarize the impact of delay spread can someone answer this what is the impact of delay spread now can someone what is impact of what is impact of delay spread impact of delay spread is it causes distortion very good in time domain in frequency domain it causes frequency selective fading that is spectrum distortion in time domain it causes what does it cause it causes inter symbol in time domain it causes inter symbol interference what is the impact of frequency selective what is the impact of delay spread in frequency in frequency domain it causes frequency selective fading in time domain it causes inter symbol in time domain it causes inter symbol interference in frequency domain it causes frequency selective fading in time domain it causes inter symbol interference okay so that is basically the impact of the delay spread so the delay spread is very important quantity in wireless communication everyone can see delay spread is a very critical quantity in a wireless channel so delay spread is a key quantity or a critical quantity so delay spread is a key or an important parameter of a delay spread is a key parameter of the wireless channel right and also there is a question regarding the delay spread that is what we said typical value of delay spread is around microseconds typical value of delay spread is around microseconds and typical value of the coherence bandwidth is around 200 to 300 kilohertz right and the delay spread is a key parameter in the wireless delay spread in the wireless channel a large delay spread implies problems if there is a large delay spread there is frequency selective fading and basically inter interference large delay spread causes problems there is there is basically frequency selective distortion and inter yes yeah, the recap of today's lecture that is basically uh, that is basically nothing but simple please go over the lecture notes what we have done is basically we have
done looked at some of the salient aspects somehow i'm not able to yeah we are we have done what are the salient aspects of uh, of basically how to characterize the delay spread the maximum delay spread and the rms delay spread and also the concept of coherence bandwidth what is the coherence bandwidth coherence bandwidth is basically the range of frequencies or the frequency range over which the channel response is flat so if basically the signal bandwidth is less than the coherence bandwidth there is flat fading if the signal bandwidth is greater than the coherence bandwidth then there is frequency selective fading and also in the time domain if the delay spread is greater than half the symbol time they have inter symbol interference and that we said that relation is nothing but if d t d is greater than or equal to half t s that implies that b s is greater than or equal to b c which is nothing but frequency selective fading and basically what we said is the inter symbol interference in time domain implies frequency selective fading in the frequency domain these are one and the same thing so what we said is the impact of a delay spread is critical a large delay spread in a wireless channel it causes frequency selective distortion and basically inter symbol interference depending on how we are looking at it if we are looking at it in the frequency domain it is a frequency selective uh, it, it's not two different effects it's the same effect in frequency selective domain in frequency domain you can see it as frequency selective distortion and in the time domain its implication is basically inter symbol interference in time domain the impact of this is basically the inter symbol interference what is the code difference between shadowing and fading we did not get to shadowing but shadowing is very different from fading what we are talking about is we are talking about the small scale fading shadowing is basically a large scale effect it depends on if there is any shadow object such as a large mountain or a large building or a large tree in the path of the propagation of the signal shadowing results results from large shadowing objects these are shadow regions that is for instance such as let's say a large mountain or a large building or such thing that is basically the signal is shadowed because of this large object this is what we are talking about is fading or the small scale fading this occurs in a scale time scale which is much much faster compared to the shadowing effect RMS delay spread is better than the mean delay spread in the set. There is no mean delay spread. I think I answered that yesterday. There is only a mean delay. A mean delay is a different quantity. RMS delay spread is actually a delay spread. The average delay spread is not an average delay spread. The average delay spread is simply an average delay. The average delay is simply the average delay of the signal. you are probably confusing it with the maximum delay spread which is basically the difference between the last and the first arriving components and we said already said that rms delay spread is better because it weighs the different components by the power that is arrive that is arriving in the particular component i hope this is clear i repeated this yesterday already the average, there is nothing such as an average delay spread there is no average there is no concept of an average delay spread we only about rms delay spread and a mean and the maximum delay spread the mean delay is only a delay it is not a delay spread it is only the mean it is not the deviation okay hopefully that clarifies the question any other questions all right if there are no other questions outdoor propagation models are independent are we going to study no we don't have unfortunately as i said we don't have enough time to uh, uh to carry out uh, a study of all these different models for instance there are several models such as the okamura hata model now my lectures are also available on nptel i don't know if people have already seen these lectures several of my like let me mention this several of my lectures are also available on all of my lectures in fact the complete course on 3g 4g that is available on nptel i had recorded them about two or about two years ago this is uh, more or less similar to the course that i taught at iit kanpur it's a graduate level course of course it's slightly advanced i don't know if many under, uh, undergraduates uh, will be able to understand the complete content but it's worth going over the content so my nptel lectures for this course the complete set including mimo ofdm etc are available what is the relation between bc and rms delay spread that is what we talked about the relation between bc and the delay spread is bc equals 1 over 2 td right bc equals 1 over 2 dd that is the relation between the coherence bandwidth and the delay spread 
yeah so try to go through those nptel lectures because in this uh, mode because of the nature of the instruction because typically there are only undergraduate students it is not possible for me to go very far cover a lot of material right also because the instruction is uh, is instruction is in a distance mode where i cannot directly interact with the students i have to restrict the amount of material and also the complexity of the material but we have covered a significant amount of material we have covered basically the flat fading the impact of flat the impact of a flat fading channel we also looked at basically the bitter rate we have looked at the bitter rate in a multiple antenna system and we have looked at the impact of diversity and we have also now looked at the uh, delay spread tomorrow we look at the doppler we have one extra lecture tomorrow There is an extra lecture tomorrow that is 28th March. This is going to be our last lecture where I am going to cover uh, the delay spread. There is one more question, brief guidance on MATLAB. Well, MATLAB, uh, MATLAB there are several, uh, there is several help that is available online. There are several MATLAB modules for relay fading, etc. that are available online. You can start with those for uh, your simulation and you can see how you progress. Okay. All right. Okay, then with that, let us stop this lecture here. Tomorrow we'll cover Doppler effect and that will be our last lecture. All right. Okay. Thank you. Today there was no also, also those who joined in late today. There was no LAN connection. Since there was no LAN connection, I'm on the Wi-Fi and therefore there is no video. Hopefully things will be better tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you very much.